to Level Sync, a Final Fantasy XI podcast with your hosts, DA Soccer, Caladrius, Lost Time Lord, Ayame Cat, and Quetch. Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming back. Welcome to Level Sync, a Horizon Final Fantasy XI podcast. I am your ever inimitable host, the Lost Time Lord, uh, with my fellow podcasters, podcastees, podcast people, the folks who do the podcast with me. Um, in my upper left, I'm just going based on my orientation. In my upper left, we have the Dairy Queen, Ayame Cat. Say hello. Meowdy. <laughs> and to her right, we have the Burger King. We have Kil- Icy Caladrius. What's going on, friend? What's up? Just below him, we have the Jack in the Box. Uh, call me Quetch. What's up, Quetch? <laughs> I've never eaten there. Is, is that any good? I feel like every no, time I'm it's, a... It's absolute trash. It's if trash. you're drunk at 2 a.m. It's it's like... You know what? If, yeah. you're, if you're drunk at 2 a.m., I think I'm pretty enjoyable to watch as well. <laughs> they, they advertise two stoners, so it's definitely a place you want to go to. And finally, the Wendy's of our podcast. What's up, DA Soccer? How are you doing? King, Queen, Jack, and a Wendy's? Yeah, that was the best I could do. I love Baconators, but I don't price gouge. <laughs> there won't be. Well, so it's, DA it's, saying, it's basically, not... there won't be any surge pricing for DA. Right. He's like, you get what you pay for every time, is, is what he's trying to say. It's, it's a low-quality food, and it's consistently that, okay? You always get that. The Frosties are the bomb, let's be honest. Like, oh, Frosties, Frosties are... Oh, wow. Is that wow, what, never that, do that again. That was the best compliment LTL ever yeah, gave was, DA. The, the, that, that the Your frosties, frosties are, are great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the creamy chocolatiness of a DA frosty. Um, anyways, guys, we have an amazing episode this week. We're finally going back to the interview format. Not going to say who with just yet. It might be in the title. I don't know. I haven't seen the title yet. We're recording. Um, but we have an interview tonight. But before we get to the exciting interview that we have, we uh, have a little something that we like to do. And we like to catch up with everybody what they've been up to since we've seen them last. So, Dairy Queen, <laughs> what have you been up to? <laughs> Me? Dairy Queen? Yeah. I don't know. It's it's the most feminine-sounding one that I can I got. I got my list. Hold on. Let me show you the notebook that I have this in. Do you see this? Meow. So many cat cats. stickers all over it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it didn't look like there was anything written on it. <laughs> it's just it's just, there's nothing stickers. written on it. It's just cat stickers. She, she, it's like hieroglyphs. I met a Mithra. The they, they mean different things. <laughs> I have on here my stuff. Was this in the last two weeks? That's so crazy for me to think. I got, I finally got 75 white mage, okay? I did it. It's done. I still gotta update stuff in my Lua, and I still need to get certain pieces of gear. But it's done, kind of. Is it going to be used as much as my red mage? No. No. <laughs> but I have it. Um, I. You know what I also did? The Shadows of the Departed and the Apocalypse Nigh. But I oh, still yeah. haven't picked out an earring. I still haven't picked out my damn earring, okay? I know I, I, know I could go pick it up, but I don't know what I want to get. But those are done. And since I have my white mage unlocked... I unlocked Black Halo, <laughs> the club skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be strong. So, but I had, I had some real life stuff go on. But Stacey, so you I haven't had... been up to anything else. I haven't nothing, nothing else you want to mention that might have happened in your life. <laughs> I had an organ removed, not this Sunday, but like last Sunday, like the last Sunday of February. Went to the ER, and they were like. Yeah, something's messed up because I was in pain. I find, like I got transferred to the hospital and I had emergency surgery because I had a very infected, swollen. There was Sithius. like you had an infected Scythius. You had a Scythius removed from the inside. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Cholecystitis, inflammation of the gallbladder. So my gallbladder was removed. So I have like a bunch of boo boos on my tummy. And unfortunately, it was also my, my cat's birthday on Sunday, and I can't hold them because I can't pick up more than five to ten pounds, and the cat is 15 pounds. <laughs> hey, fucking cat, you got a dolka in your house? <laughs> no, they're half uh, Maine they're Coon. Coons. They're, they're big ass cats, you know? It's a man. Yeah, oh, yes, a, a cat Galka. <laughs> 
it's the cutest Galkas. But yeah, that's all I've been up to. Just white magey stuff and, and an impending earring and a organ removal. Organ <laughs> Standard removal. That's, yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. Glad you're feeling better. Glad you're feeling better. Um, you. Burger King, what have you been up to? I've been reluctantly leveling Summoner. <laughs> um, 65, halfway to 66. Oh, you made it! Awesome. Yeah. Ten more yeah. levels. Ten more levels. <laughs> nice. We got. We better finish recording so we can get up to some fucking no. hood rat shit. Rookie told me uh, he died to a water elemental within your party earlier today. No, I died to oh, a water ye- elemental. Okay. So it's, it's it's some bullshit. So the red mage <laughs> is standing right here. I'm standing right here. Rookie's over there blowing shit up on the samurai, and I cast. I think I was summoning Garuda to rehaska. The water elemental, elemental goes, fuck the red mage, fuck the paladin, flies between the two of them and starts beating the shit out of me. Oh, and where so have I, I just... heard that before, Cal? Where, where, where <laughs> has that happened to a summoner before? Is that, have, you ever, no have you ever experienced the summoner getting fucked from halfway across the zone like that before? Weird. That's so weird. Uh... But I ran to the tree next to us to just die, right? Red mage can raise me. I really don't care if I die. Red mage tries to sleep, said water elemental. Oof. And it does not go to sleep. So then the red mage dies. So the paladin had to raise both of us. And it we got back on track. It was a good party. Uh, but yes, I told Rookie that I was going to tell you that he, they said they hate you. <laughs> and that, that you discussed them. And they said you wouldn't believe it. So, uh, Not from Rookie, no. Not, not in a dozen years. And then, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I finally did a thing. That LTL and Ayami have been bitching at me for, for, I don't know, like seven months. And I went and did the uh, Sky Teleport quest, so now I can just oh, go to any God. Of and teleport <laughs> up to Sky. At first I was just enjoying their lament. And then I got tired of running through Zeta and Romave and... So I finally did that. That's about it. I've, I've been like hardcore burning Summoner for like two weeks. He's almost well, there. I got Finru too. Oh, nice. This week. Oh, you guys, because uh, we were talking about that last week, right? We were talking, or uh, last episode, you guys were working on the summons and doing the, like, the full rotation points. of them. Yeah. yeah. So we did all the primes, and then we were going to go do Finru, and then Ayame's gallbladder decided it needed to exit her. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so she had to leave. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of late, guys. I gotta go. Sith, take me to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in immense pain, please. But yeah, no, I got all that done. Um, that's about it. I'm just trying to get to 75. It's been actually more fun than I thought it would be as a Galka. Summoner's a good job. I, well, I have some intimate knowledge of the, of the job. It's kind of fun. I actually get an MP pool because I'm a summoner. Thank oh, I've also, I've also been playing uh, roulette or Russian roulette with uh, crafting HQ staves. Oh. <laughs> Oh, right, right. Ah, so I've been buying yes. ores and cutting them and then having wood uh, woodworkers fucking try and craft me HQs. You gotta fix that sentence up. That's coming from me. You say you've been playing Russian roulette and yeah, no. a long pause before Look, you're talking about My crafting. hobbies are none of your fucking concern. I, I didn't say the two that. went together. Hal's on some <laughs> hard times right now. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I've been doing that. So far, I've got four HQ staves. Hmm. So it hasn't gone horribly. Anyways, moving on very quickly. Um, <laughs> Jack in the box, what have you been up to? Um, I I was just we were talking about elemental staves, and I I remembered the the thing I I, I realized earlier this evening before we started recording. Uh, there is ninety seven, or there was ninety seven earth ore on the auction house, and uh, you know I, I'm constantly because I'm a, I'm I do chocobo digging right, and so I'm getting ores a couple a week. Um, you garden, you get like five. If you're really lucky, you get more than five. Um, and for a long time, I've noticed that every once in a while, one ore will just spike. There'll be like 40, 50 in the auction house, like overnight. And I just assumed that there's some group of people who are all going, okay, this ore is the most valuable. If we just shove a bunch on the auction house, the price will come down, but then it'll rebound because people will, will buy them up because they're a little bit cheaper. And uh, this has been going on for a long time in the server, but never have I seen, like, what happened in the past week. There was, like, 80, 
And the only reason I'm salty, well, there's two reasons I'm salty. One, I have two of them that I've been trying to sell, but they keep getting undercut, and now the market is just trash. And I don't, where do you even get 97 Earth Ore from overnight? So sell them to me, Quetch. <laughs> mm, I'm going to wait for Chris to come back up a little bit. I think 170K is a little too low. I'll but you don't. 180K. Oh my Enjoy. gosh. This feels like uh, the uh, white shells from the other episode. You got any white shells? <laughs> I'll yeah. trade you. No, um, don't worry about it. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm also, I'm also, by the way, I gave my second crystal to my plants yesterday. I'm growing earth ores. So that's the other reason why I'm salty about it. I'm on my second <laughs> crystal feed of my damn plants. And it's the ore that randomly got jacked up on the auction house. Anyway, uh, made a little progress on Mandau since last episode. I've been buying shells. Um, speaking of which, if anybody wants to sell for 9K, send me a tell. Um, coming along with on that, I'm like I'm like 2,500 away from finishing that stage. And uh, but like content wise, we did a bunch of KS99. That was fun. The turtle, have you guys have you guys done the turtle yet? KS99. I have. Yeah, I did that a long yeah. time ago. So the whole thing is like. Um, you do enough damage, it goes into its shell. When it's in its shell, it really doesn't take physical damage. You want to, like, skill chain a magic burst or whatever. But, um, one of the fun things that we have, we have a, uh, Relic Ranger in our Link shell. And so, they can do a second step of darkness. So, like, alright, so if you do, like, not enough damage, he gets in his shell, he ha you have to wait for him to regen, or you have to try to damage him out of his shell. Or if you do too much damage, you send him, like, he comes out of his shell, and then he goes back in because you've done too much damage. But what we found is, if we do like a darkness skill chain magic burst him and then a second and then follow it up with a double darkness from the relic ranger what happens is he goes into his shell he comes out of his shell he goes back into his shell and then he comes out of his shell by the time the both sets of magic bursts are done um and it just worked perfectly it would just be like three skill chains and the thing's dead um so anyway that was fun if anybody's done that that ks99 you know it's it can be a pain in the butt but so it's kind of a fun way of doing it <laughs> That's about it. Nice. Nice. Yep. Nice. Um, oh, and Paladin. Uh, Leveling Paladin as well. It's almost 55. I'm building it for... I'm, I'm going to try doing DD Paladin at 55. Uh, dual, dual good swords. So, um, that's fun, too. Okay. All right. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'll let you know how it goes. I'll let you, I'll let you guys know how it goes on the next episode. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, creamy chocolate frosty, man. What have you been up to? Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't get fucked by earth elementals. I didn't get fucked by a water elemental. I didn't get fucked by an organ um, that was being removed from my body. Um, all, all I've been doing is playing a little bit of the Final Fantasy VII remake um, and leveling Beastmaster. Beastmaster is now 63. Um, and I'm enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would, to be honest with you. I am now, I did go back to get, try for Peacock. And remember, last episode I said we ran three. I was the middle one. I was the only one that didn't get a drop, and these two did. I didn't get it again today, so we're going to continue that whenever <laughs> I see a shout. Um, and by the way, I hate Bastok, so if anybody has a 9-1 or 9-2 shout, let me know. I'd definitely love to join it because there are no fucking outposts. Uh, Cal, you said you just got the teleport up to Sky. Did I get the teleport to Sky before you did? No, I got it like two weeks ago. Are you sure? Right then? after the last recording. Oh, okay. I, I was just it fucking with you because ago. I still haven't gotten it myself, and uh, <laughs> I I hate anything dealing with Bastok. I want to get the fuck out of it because they can't get outposts with the shit, okay? So I'm looking to be able to complete it and move over to Windy as my number three. Um, but besides that, it's it's been just a slow grind of the Beastmaster. It's been actually enjoyable with the quick invites, but today was the first day I ran into a little bit of a struggle of actually getting a party. But other than that, yeah. I could solo, I know Beastmasters are meant to solo, but I'm I don't want to. So I'll just put my flag up and work on Bonecraft. I think Bonecraft now I got to sixty four. So I'm working it. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Uh speaking of which, uh for myself, just hit seventy one point four woodworking. Um working my way up there. It's starting to get starting to get a little spicy with the gill, boys. Starting to uh starting to feel the sting a little bit. Um not terribly. Um, petrified logs are like 45k a stack. I can turn them around for like 41k a stack if I don't break any. Um, which you know, I've, I've got a pretty good record on it. Um, I've made some of my money back. Um, 
<clears throat> I'm getting a lot of really good skill ups from that, but um, I'm also now working on my GP finally, like I should have been this whole time, like when I wasn't doing shit, but now I'm finally actually doing it. I'm up to 30k GP. Um, I need 220k to get all the things that I want. The uh, apron, the gloves, and the um, furniture item. Quetch is all too familiar with those things, I'm sure. Yeah, one step at a time, dude. The the big yeah. number is is much harder to look at. You gotta, yeah, just day by day. Yeah. So I'm working on the apron first. I'm gonna hit the hardest one first, the most expensive one first, and then I'll save up for gloves, which is the second most expensive, and then I'll get the uh, furniture item. Um, I feel like where I'm at in that 68 level, forget what it, the rank is called, artisan maybe. Um, I feel like I'm getting a, a pretty good break on the GP stuff. Um, like, it feels like a lot of what I have to do is equivalent to, like, the first rank turn-ins. So, like, they're pretty inexpensive. Um, today, Mithril Lances, um, I had to turn in three of them, and they sold for, like, I think it was, like, 11K a piece. So, 33K for 6K GP. Can't really argue too much about that. Five to one is so, a pretty good rate. Yeah, so I was doing so I'm doing all right with that. Like it's it's slow going, but I'm working on that every day, buying a stack of uh, petrified logs here and there, um, and I'm getting pretty decent skill ups, like I said. So I'm going to be working on that. Um, finished. Um, well, so long, long, long time ago, I had finished um, Apocalypse Nine and had gotten the magnetic earring because my a very singular focus back then was Summoner. And not that it's like some great, amazing earring for Summoner or anything, but it's the only one that really worked for Summoner, right? So I had that. Um, and as I've mentioned before, I'm kind of like transitioning a little bit to doing Black Mage more. It's kind of my thing now, my jam. Um, and I've, I've gotten some pretty good gear thanks to um, my boyfriend and thanks to other people. Uh, you see how Cal laughed when I said that? Because it's Cal. Cal's my boyfriend. Um, he, bought, he bought me a sword ring. Bought him a fucking sword ring, and <laughs> they're not work together. Yeah, we're. I'm a well, it's a ring. Him. You uh, put a ring on it. Yeah, he did put a he ring, put on, a it, ring yeah. on it. Yeah, if you like it, then you better put a ring on it. Um, so, um, I uh, so because I had the magnetic, I was like, you know, like according to what I've read, and this could be true or may not be true. Um, there's only two pieces of gear right now for black mages that will give you magic burst plus magic day. And that's the relic gloves and the static earring. And the static earring is the other choice from the magnetic set. Um, so I guess I kind of have a reverse glitch fest. Um, we'll hit this up before we actually get to glitch fest. So I'll mention this now. Um, I was worried, right? Like, you know, Horizon's great. We love Horizon, but sometimes shit just doesn't work, right? And I was very, very very, 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 very concerned about dropping that fucking earring and then going and talking to the guy and being like, yeah, let's get this shit started. <laughs> let's get this going. I was really concerned. I was so concerned, in fact, that I messaged Hugin and was like, hey, man, so uh, does this quest work on this server? He's like, let me get back to you. And he's like, yeah, it seems to work. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. If it doesn't work, you're gonna, I'm going to be very, very sad. And then um, I dropped it, and I was, and I sent him the screenshot of me dropping it. And he's like, "Fingers crossed." And then I go and uh, talk to the person I need to talk to, or whatever. And then it actually started the. Uh, we have to click question marks, and then it like it erased my memories of Apocalypse Nine and the Shadows of not Shadows. Is it Shadows of the Departed where you go to the top of the Shadows of the ends? Departed and yeah, yeah, yeah. Apocalypse so, Nine. So it erased the memories of those, and then I was able to restart those quests. I went into Rulu Gardens. And the qu the cutscene started for me. So I guess my anti um, glitch fest was like, you know, bravo, thank you for making that work. Made my life a lot less full of anxiety. Um, but anyways, I went through with Ayami and Sith and um, changed my successfully changed my earring from magnetic to static, and now um, I can do extra magic burst damage, which is good. Now he dies more. He does I a do. lot of damage yeah. now. Everybody's well, like, oh, you gave him a, a Sork ring. That's so nice. No, I wanted to watch so him nice. fucking die. <laughs> because <laughs> because Haru that... using a Sork ring has 500 HP. Oh, so the I HP trigger. Wind yeah, it's more the 75 75% of my HP has to be, like, all that exists for the Sork ring to proc. And so I have um, an HP downset, which takes my HP to 521 
um, for me to use, for me to proc my Sork Ring. Um, so yeah, so it was funny because like I've been using that and dying a lot and like Ayame was out as you know in like sick and you guys may not know this, but one of our fun things that we like to experience is when we're in like a Dynamis, for example, and somebody gets really low health, like the gasp and the freak out from Ayame is priceless. Like if you guys have never experienced this, I highly recommend it because she absolutely loses her shit. So like when she was finally back and like we ran the previous Dynamis, I was like, oh, you're going to, oh, it was H-E-N-M. I'm like, you're going to fucking love what my HP looks like now when I get this Sork Ring. So I hit the fucking, I hit the HP down set. And somebody else in the party was like, did you fucking nuke yourself? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? You're like, taking damage? Like, yeah. So now I run around with, like, yellow HP all the time. And like Cal said, uh, a stiff wind knocks me over. He pulled um, hate off of one of the birds for H-E-N-M's. It looked at him. Shit you not. It just turned and turned back. And he was dead. Was <laughs> there was no, like, animation, no nothing. It was just, like, a 280 damage crit is all it showed, and he was just laying there. Yeah, kill LTL. Get him dead. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it definitely fucked me up, so I'm definitely experiencing that a lot more, but um, the damage increase has been rather impressive, and um, I still need my Uggy P pendant. So I want to get that, too, and then I'll be even more badass. Um, but those are the things that I've been working on. Um... That's where we're at this, uh, you know, this, since we've seen you last, those are the awesome things that we've been up to and the things that we've been doing. But now we have an even more amazing part of this episode. Buckle the fuck in, guys, because we have an awesome and amazing interview with um, somebody who you would not even expect us to have an interview with. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to let it pop up and I'm going to let you guys see who it is. So check this out. All right, guys, so now we are here. Um, the special, awesome, amazing part of the uh, episode um, where we have an interview with a pretty amazing person. Um, our last interview was forever ago, huh, guys? Like, we haven't interviewed anybody in... Eight God. episodes? Nine episodes? When was, when was the... What, who were the last? Was it the devs were the last yep. people we interviewed? Yeah, it was the devs. Jesus, that feels like so... Freaking long ago. Um, I guess because it was, right? Like it's, it was pretty it was pretty long ago. Well, we'll have to do some more. But anyways, today we have an amazing interview with you guys. You guys may uh, recognize this person uh, if you're in the uh, Horizon Discord. You may have seen the recent ping about someone who has basically completely remastered the soundtrack for Treasures of Ot Ergon, and it will be used in the Horizon server's Treasures of Ot Ergon, <clears throat> when that comes out eventually at some point <laughs> ever. Um, but it will be it, it will be used in that. And uh, so today we have with us the fabulous Rosu. Um, and he is uh, living in a very, very far away country from us. It is a ridiculous <laughs> hour of the morning for him. Um, but he has woken up early to do this interview with us. And we are excited as hell to have you. Larosu, welcome. Thank you for being here. How are you? How are things going? Uh, thank you. Uh, things are dark and tired here. <laughs> but in, in general, life is uh, life is pretty good here. Thanks and thanks for yeah. Thanks for having me on. Uh, super excited about it. It doesn't feel too early when you get a warm reception like this. So I'm good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, um, it would be tough for us <laughs> to do it at any other time. That would work for you even better. But this is since this is the this is the best way to start a day. I have to admit, it's like you can't, you couldn't possibly start your day any better than being berated by an old bald guy and um, and, <laughs> and his posse and his, po and his yeah. homeboys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're super. It's we're super happy to have you here. Um, you know, like uh, we we listened to this soundtrack. Um, you know, since we knew we were going to have you on, we made it a point, right? And um, I've listened to it a few times. And um, I'm obviously very familiar with the original soundtrack. I mean, I played a lot, just a ton. I spent most of my time in Whitegate, if we're being honest. I mean, I, my Blue Mage is my heart, so I spent a lot of time in, uh, in Whitegate and El Zabi and those places. So a lot of that music is uh, stuff that I grew up with, I guess. And look at me now, look at me now, Mom. I'm, I'm all grown up. Um, but um, I'm, it was, it's, it's really nice to listen to what you've done. Um, it's like, you know, like it's not, it, it's a cover, but it's not, um, mm. it, it's not like your own vision, but it is, and it's awesome. And I love like 
it, it just feels like a, a cleaned up HD version of those original songs that are from way back in the day. And it's a, it breathes a, a, a fresh life into those songs. And it's really fantastic. Um, so, you know, I've been, we, we talk all the time on here about how much we love Final Fantasy XI and how much we played it growing up and how much it means to us. Obviously, here after a, what is it now, guys? Like a, a year and a half, we're still doing this fucking thing. Or over a, oh, just uh, over a year. Just over a year. We're coming uh, up to a year. A year and a, oh, okay. Our first episode was a, end of, end of March. March. Okay. It was the end of March. Okay. We had All to right. have it out before the beginning of April. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, yeah. So we're coming up on our one-year anniversary. we got to do something special for that. I don't think we've talked about that. Okay. <laughs> special for our anniversary. Anyways, um, we played so much Final Fantasy XI, and it's such a huge integral part of our lives at this point. Um, what is, you know, we were curious. Like, you know, somebody who has devoted all this time to remake an iconic soundtrack. What is your experience with Eleven? Like, have you ever played? I mean, do you play the game? Uh, yeah, so I played it on Northern American release in like 2002, 2003, whenever that was. And mm -hmm. obviously I was living in Europe at the time. So that was uh, not something you just bump into. I was super excited for the release of Final Fantasy Eleven. I remember being on a... Uh, sort of UK Final Fantasy forum with like 50 people on it, PHBB vibes, <laughs> <laughs> or PHBB vibes, if we'll allow me that many consonants. Uh, <laughs> and just talking about how I'm going to be like a little Taru Taru mage, you know, figure all that stuff out. And you get in the game, and it's like the most confusing thing I've ever seen, but I love the whole thing as well. I was like 15 at the time. Sure. Which I think is probably the perfect age to start a game kind of obtuse as Final Fantasy XI because any little bits of information, little tidbits they give you, it just stays locked into the synapses. Absolutely. But yeah, I played Final Fantasy XI from basically as soon as I finished school till about 2, 3, 4 a.m. and then woke up <laughs> at a stupid hour to go back to school and not pay a huge amount of attention while I was there, always thinking about uh, Final Fantasy XI while I was hanging out. We're but all nodding. For about two years. We're all like this. Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, 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 I know that vibe. I know that feeling. That's a whole vibe. It's a bit of a shared experience. And when you said, like, these songs were stuck in your head, uh, LTL, uh, I, can't, I, I vibe with that quite a lot. Like we spend a lot of time in these zones. Like I feel like Al Zabi is the CGBGs of uh, <laughs> like a certain kind of 30, 40 year old uh, video game player. Like that's you're where we we cut our jobs. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong. A lot of great music in that expansion. Um, that but yeah, I, I feel like I had like a very casual, like the, this average casual Final Fantasy XI player's experience in that original uh, well, in the I guess it's still released, but in that original play back in back in two thousand two, two thousand three, I just remember I ended up leveling White Mage to seventy five because it was so hard for me to get groups in EU time that I definitely had to have a good job. Right, <laughs> like right. I was staying there trying to trying to party with uh, the late living Japanese players and the early rising North American ones, and uh, it was tough because I started out as a thief, and I think I sat in. Uh, Kufum. I've never said that word out loud. Kufum. Kufum. Uh, That's one of the things. When you start playing this game with other people and you have like immediate voice chat like this and you have to say things out loud, <laughs> huh? it's, it's really fucked up. Like it's huh? really fucked up. Like, That's the whole, whole personality, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Yeah, that's your yeah. entire the thing. The zone under Juno that we all know and love yeah. and hate a little bit, depending <laughs> on your experiences there. Yeah, right. The snowy bitch under Juno, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And just sitting there going, why does no one want to party with me as like a no sub job level 20 thief? I mean, the answers are obvious now, but I, think <laughs> I, was, bit, I was way too ignorant and probably never improved that much. <laughs> <laughs> so you never really had any like end game experience stuff. It was just mostly like you, you were kind of casual or did you like kill grand worms or how long did you, I mean, I'm sorry, there's a couple of questions, but like, how long did you play yeah. for? Like, when did you quit? Uh, well, I quit when I went to university, so it was about a two-year stint near the end of my sort of secondary education and just really bumping into like a long summer of Final Fantasy XI and then going, ah, oh, I need to get real with myself a, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Like, I love this game and it's like it's, uh, the, probably the biggest part of my life at the time, but uh, I was sort of staring down the barrel of this curriculum that I did not understand and I... Like I got scared stiff, if that's a... <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, a big reality check. Uh, and even then, I, I took my sweet time getting good at being in a university. So <laughs> I, it was good. I dropped Final Fantasy XI for it. Otherwise, yeah, I'd have been right? super, super screwed there. What but server? No, I was, uh, oh, what I was server on Cerberus. On? Ah. Cerberus, yeah. But I do have some endgame experience. Like I was in, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the link show, Pi May. Uh, I don't know if that's a famous Link show or not, but it was a North American show and I could barely turn up to any of the events. I think I was more of a, a curiosity and just kind of useful when a white mage turns up there. Uh, and for a small time, I had like a very small end game Link show with a couple of European friends when more of them came online. Uh, but I'd say it's a very minimal experience. Like we did, uh, we did a couple of uh, Dynamises. We did... Uh, uh, some of the harder, like uh, low man NMs, but never really did a, a YM, although I definitely camped a few of them and thought this is a complete waste of my 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think it wasn't really so much scary as a sort of completely weird. Like the computer I was using at the time was not really strong enough to play Final Fantasy XI, which is, it wasn't really that. Uh, taxing of a game <laughs> either so you can imagine i had a computer where uh, when i originally bought the game and loaded it on there it did not work because i didn't have a graphics card in it uh, <laughs> so i had to mm -hmm. go to like the the local store and talk to them about what uh, a pci graphics card can do for me and it was just about run final fantasy 11 on the lowest settings <laughs> <laughs> We all make so sacrifices I, I, for Final Fantasy XI. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of uh, lawns mode. Uh, and I mean that in the most literal sense, because that was my uh, after-school job. <laughs> wow. Nice. Well, that's awesome. Um, so do you still play? Like, do you play on any private servers? Have you done any of that kind of action? So I do play on Horizon on and off, but I, I've just maintained my extremely casual vibes. Like, I, I first started with a Red Mage, got that to about level 50, and then uh, I wouldn't say I got burnt out. It's just I was like, ah, oh, okay. I've had enough. I've had, I've I've refelt this game again. Yeah. Did some fishing. I was kind of intrigued to do fishing because at 15, I don't think I had the the wherewithal to stick with something as uh, kind of <laughs> unengaging as fishing can mm -hmm. can be. Uh, uh, whereas this time around, I've grown up and uh, I've learned being boring is uh, like quite a good skill. Well, you're gonna sit there and press the damn buttons. You're not exactly uh, like uh, a rock star at that point, uh, <laughs> but you got you gotta love the process. Uh, and these days, I can enjoy that process a bit more and be like that. That was a good hour spent collecting 24 red terrapins. That's gonna be big for me. <laughs> <laughs> When you said you uh, hop in and you go till you get like a not burnt out, but just you got your fix and immediately yeah. thought of a drug user that was like, <laughs> okay, I got my 11. I got my 11. I'm cool to take a break. Kind of. I don't know if there's any sort of nostalgia dust like available, but I think I'm huffing <laughs> that if that's, uh, yeah, exactly. if we get a sprinkle of that on that. Uh, but. Uh, I also, I, the other project I had in Final Fantasy XI, well, for the Horizon server, uh, was like a solo drag, drag Dragoon uh, leveling project. So I've, I've got that to about uh, level 54, just on little bits of off time coming in. And that's completely solo leveling, I think, except for like one small group I had with the beast in uh, uh, Carpenter's Landing. And I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't need this anymore. <laughs> he was a nice guy, whoever that was. I don't remember the name. Don't feel bad about it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, I mean, it's so awesome that you uh, are playing on Horizon. Um, I, I, you know, do you, what, I, do you want to uh, say what your name in game is? Or do you want to keep that to yourself? Or do you want people to reach um, out to you or no? Well, so the name is my Discord name. So it's Rousseau, kind of a French spin on the name I'm using anyway, because... Oh, so like R-O-U-S-S-E-A-U? Add an X on the end and you've got oh, it. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, I, so I, that's I, you in game. All right. Well, I mean, I wanted to know, too, so that if I see you, I can wave and, like, be like, hey, remember the time we talked on the thing, the thing that we did? It was great. We had that fun, right? Um, well, my current project is sort of AFK, not AFK, but sort of mindlessly fishing moat carp with my high level fisher while I mm. watch a movie. So if I'm on at the moment, you'll, you'll catch me in Rollenberry Fields in one of the uh, uh, the, the lakes there. Do I smell a Lu Shang's rod incoming? Um, 
you've got very good olfactory senses because that <laughs> meal has not even started cooking really. <laughs> but so yeah, he has fishing, and I'm like, he's getting, he's getting banned. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm immediate ban. Sorry, guys. It feels like it. it's more like the mind is AFK while the hands are still at work. This is a bad <laughs> approach for any job except this particular fishing one, or maybe like some sort of warrior party. I don't know. But we we know that you've been working on the uh, White Gate soundtrack and all of that. But how did you get started making music? Yeah, that's a that's sort of a a lifetime's endeavor with lots of, lots of little small moments building up to this. So when I was at school, I did a lot of trumpet playing. That was the instrument that I got. I don't feel like I was a very good trumpet player. So <laughs> by the time it, it got hard and you kind of had to uh, sort your own lessons out, uh, I, I sort of gave up. I didn't I didn't really feel like booking that all in, turning up, getting bullied on the bus for bringing a trumpet with you. Like that, that kind of killed the joy of playing that instrument for me. Uh, but then sort of in my mid-20s, uh, I started learning the oboe and the cello just as a sort of... Uh, personal fun project. I missed music quite a lot and wanted to go back to it. And both of these were absolutely terrible options uh, for me to pick up because uh, I was traveling a lot for work at the time. Obviously a cello, not super plain <laughs> friendly in, in, in many ways. That's and actually, surpri <laughs> well, surprisingly, the oboe is also not plain friendly and it's for mm. like a very um, niche reason. Huge. Because, it's like five well, the oboe long, is, isn't it? It's long. Well, the oboe, yeah, it's big. The oboe is kind of this long. You can fit that in a, in a small box. But if you're the reeds for it, you have to edit them yourselves with a little knife. And then most planes don't want you to have that. Right? Oh. So if you don't bring that and you just uh, take your reeds with you, sometimes they will just not work and you won't have any recourse to edit it. And you're just sitting there lugging this uh, expensive instrument around where you've got a bunch of business meetings. And even when you do get it working, you're playing the oboe in a hotel. Buddy, no one likes you when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at, at some point, this, this became a, an impractical endeavor. So I started choral singing instead. And this was like a way more fruitful part of my music education. Because you're doing a lot of ear training when you do choral singing. You're learning a lot about uh, various kinds of classical music. Like it's been popular for many years at this point. <laughs> uh, and uh, I've sung in choirs for probably the last five or six years, give or take a few down years during COVID and all that. Uh, but uh, there was a point where I really wanted to do some composition work. It sounded really fun and interesting to me, but it didn't seem super achievable the way I understood it, because I understood it from a sort of classical composer's perspective. Like if I was going to compose something, I'll be writing something on a sheet of paper or in some sort of uh, engraving software like MuseScore. And it was until I saw a YouTube video about uh, orchestral sample libraries. I'm like, what the heck are these things? And it's just these uh, vast sound packs that have uh, acoustically sampled every instrument in an orchestra or a large range of them at least. And then you can program them to sound like real music it sounded it seemed like magic at the time and when i started playing with it i thought this is the way more accessible version of composing something i could legitimately see myself uh, being good at or producing something of interest with and i started playing around with that probably around three years ago composing some small things uh, making some music for some game jams and stuff like that and then when I saw the Horizon projects, I was kind of keeping tabs on the Final Fantasy XI world while not engaging with it too much. But I saw the Horizon project and thought, man, it would be really good if they had if they had a little project for uh, updating the music. And lo and behold, uh, Eric had already thought of that and was well on the way and had a group of people working on that project. Uh, and I basically just sent in some of the work I've done. They liked it and started uh, producing some tracks for them. Uh, and got into the project that way. But I have to say the Horizon 11 project is probably the biggest piece of work I've done up to this point. So I think what you've listened to is uh, the maximum ability of my skill at the moment. So you're, you're in the middle of uh, <laughs> understanding what I can do and what I'm about. Uh, so, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask a different question than what's written here. Um, did you... So did you basically say, I want to do treasures, or did uh, that just kind of happen? 
I think it kind of happened. So the way I joined the project, I joined in December. So basically the month of release. So the work that I did uh, to start with, I don't think it even made the original release of the Horizon project. I had to come in in one of the later launcher updates, I, I think. Um, but so I, but I think everyone who'd worked on that project for a whole year without any sort of feedback from the community, I'm not sure if they were burnt out or you know they just needed some time off. But by the time that finished, it was uh, basically me and Uzi, who I think a few of you may have bumped into at this point, uh, working on kind of cleaning up the original soundtrack and some of the cop stuff that didn't get covered in that in that first go. And then I think Uzi uh, had a lot of stuff going on in his life in a very positive way. Uh, and when we were talking about music for Treasures of Artagan, I would I would type in like, who wants to do what tracks? And people would be like, give me a moment, I need to think about it. I'm like, I think I can do it all. I think I can just save you guys the trouble. We can have like a coherent musical voice for the whole thing. Uh, and we can have like one specific vision of it so we don't have lots of different styles of music coming into the game, which I think was a, a challenge to manage for a volunteer group on the original release. Cause I think we had music from at least seven or eight different sources. Uh, all from different time points and all using different kinds of sounds and having different kinds of approaches. Uh, I like a lot of it, right? But uh, even if it's all amazing, if it sounds different and it all has a really different production style, that can be quite, quite jarring and it's, there's not really a good way to manage that at the end of it. So I thought, I think I can do it. I think I'm interested in doing it. I've got the time and the sort of longevity of patience these days to do with a project like that. And I think the results from it could, could be really good or really interesting, especially for a community like Final Fantasy XI that doesn't get a lot of love. Even in its heyday, it wasn't getting a lot of love, let alone uh, 20, well, we might even be on 25 years past at this point or getting close. No, we, we're more like 22, 21, aren't we? Yeah. yeah we could drive. We could drive, drink. You know, we're, <laughs> we're still old. Either way, yeah. we're, we're still old. Yeah. yeah, I feel that for sure. I, I yeah. definitely identify with that. <laughs> but no, at the, but essentially it just kind of fell into my lap. It was either you do it or when we get closer to the release, we'll do a, a crunch on it and we'll figure it out. And I thought, that sounds terrible. Let me <laughs> let me just do it in a good amount of time. Let's um, make sure we... Uh, uh, we do it well. And, and, they, it, and they, doing it so early gave me a lot of opportunity to test out the tracks with some of the people in the Horizon Discord and see if it was uh, they're kind of the target audience, right? The people who run the server, they don't run it because they love running servers. They love it because they love Final Fantasy XI, right? So if they like the stuff I'm pushing out and they generally think it's worth listening to, that's a really solid level of feedback that's actually quite hard to come by as a composer especially having like a captive audience of people who want to listen to your drafts, of which there were many, many <laughs> drafts depending on the song. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it happened. It was more of a default, but I was ready for it. So I didn't feel like it was thrown upon me. It was definitely well, a well-received body of work. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's really awesome to hear. I can't even like, I mean, you know, you take your love from way back and then it's just like, you know what, I'm just going to do the whole damn thing. And then you did it. <laughs> like, I mean, you just decided, like, I mean, that's what, like, 25 tracks? How many is it? Like 20 something, right? 21. It ended up, I think I did 19 from Tau, a bonus track, and then Rick and Jack, who's also part of the, the team, mm -hmm. uh, like contributed one song, but he also got super busy. So that, that's yeah, kind of a, a was, remnant. <laughs> as I was going through it, I saw that there was one song from somebody else and I was like, what is this? Like, I thought he did everything. <laughs> um, no, so, um, I mean, that's an amazing way to fall into it. Um, and it sounds like you were very passionate about it. So tell us about it. Like, tell us about the project. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like speak from your heart. Like, tell us all about what you've accomplished and what it is that we're here talking about today. What is, you know, Talk to us about your TOAU. Hmm. Where's a good place to start with this? I think a good place to start is, uh, it's actually something you mentioned, which was uh, that it feels like a very direct remake of the original tracks, mm -hmm. which maybe sounds kind of obvious, but it's not a natural direction to take these projects. In fact, it came with a lot of annoying challenges to try and sure. replicate and, the original soundtrack that much. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie to you. Like when I, when I heard that this was go like that, you know, I read your discord post or whatever. I honestly thought that I was going to go in and I was going to hear your interpretation 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, not that that would have been a bad thing. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, I would be totally up for hearing that. But then when we, when I started listening to it, I was just like, this sounds exactly like, well, you know, just to, to a, to a pretty high degree. I mean, there are some of yeah. your own personal flares in there, but like, <laughs> like this to a pretty high degree, this is, this is exactly the track. So yeah. So like, it was crazy to hear that, but you're right. It's, it's, yeah, not, not normally how you approach that sort of thing. And it was in, intentional. So when I was looking at uh, various people's feedback on the forum and lots of people's feedback on the, some of the new music we made, I think people were very receptive to the new stuff, but there was a bit of, they were somewhat, found it kind of jarring to listen to these tracks that they've heard so much of and get they get versions that are not like too different. I don't think there's a really a nice, uh, any way to say that, but they have an expectation for it, especially as a very nostalgia driven game. I, I think that's a fair point mm -hmm. to make at this stage. Like we're oh, here yeah. after 20, 20 plus years, like nostalgia has oh, yeah. got to be in there. For sure. And every time, and, and I've also listened to lots of remakes of video game soundtracks. And I think that there's two ways to do it well. And one is to, uh, really embody the spirit of the originals and uh, uh, kind of replicate it and make it a sort of uh, original plus style experience. Or there's sort of a Final Fantasy VII remake style, which is like really heavily leaning on modern orchestral poppy VGM soundtracks, which is a direction we could have gone with. But I felt like it didn't make any sense for this game because the game isn't getting a remake. It's getting a couple of touches here and there, but graphically and vibe-wise, it's, it's still a game from 2002 or, or earlier, really, depending on where in the world you are. Right. So if I'd, I'd like, uh, I know a few of you have played the, the Final Fantasy VII remake, but if I had that, I mean, I'm not going to suggest that mine would be that good, but if I'd went for, aimed for that uh, uh, style of production, I think it just would have... It would have sounded good, but it wouldn't have been right for the game. That was the feeling I had on that. And then once you follow that logic to its uh, kind of endpoint, remaking it in like a very strict uh, style, trying to hit the original, what people loved about the original music, but just give it a sound upgrade, that, that just felt like the right path for me. And it also was a bit more manageable in some ways. Like that takes a lot of load off on the composing side, but puts a lot more work on the mixing and production side, which is which is an impress, interesting project for me because I'd done a decent amount of composing at that point, but my production skills definitely could have used an upgrade. And this project was almost entirely about production. Actually, there's a couple of things that made uh, that approach a lot easier too. There was actually a, a dump of all the music files from the original Final Fantasy XI install discs. Uh, so you can actually rip the MIDI files from that to make a large proportion of the tracks. MIDI? It doesn't include everything. Yes, so MIDI is a, a file format that is used in music production to... Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's essentially say what notes get played when. Right, it's it's very <laughs> structured. MIDI is very structured, so yeah. that's that's insane that you you had access to that was on the in installation disc. There's just MIDI versions. Someone oh. ripped it, so I'm not sure how they did oh, it. Okay. I wasn't a part of that process, but okay. there's a dump online for for that stuff, and it makes it very easy to see what's going on in a lot of the tracks. Like some of them, the the way they uh, programmed some of the music is. Uh, interesting to say the least some of it is like a pure note for note uh, replication of what you hear in the game other parts are like triggers for quite complex samples that you would then have to notate by ear and for some tracks they're just not on these install discs at all which is a problem for treasures of utter gun because the install didn't include like the last third or maybe the last half of that expansion so you end i ended up having to transcribe at least six or seven of these uh, songs entirely by ear to do that work. So uh, that having that resource uh, available does simplify the project a little bit, but it doesn't really do a whole lot of work for you. It just takes the transcribing part out of it. And that's for each song, maybe a day or two's work, really. Most of it's going into getting each of the, uh, uh, the instrument lines sounding good, making sure they're not poking out in weird ways, and then getting all that to gel together, like a, a big mixing project, essentially. And that's really tough <laughs> because the original soundtrack for this is, it's got a lot of orchestral vibes, but it was not composed for an orchestra. So when you try and transpose it to uh, a, a very standard orchestral idea, it stops working very quickly. <laughs> like you have string quartets where you have four parts and all of them are in the, the violins range. And you're like, that's, 
you might do that <laughs> in, in, in an orchestra, but you're way more likely to split that out into uh, a much wider sound across the violin, like both uh, sets of violins, violas, cellos, basses, like you'd, you'd probably widen it most of the time. So I spent a lot of time figuring out what parts should go into what voices to sound like, uh, sound more like an orchestra rather than just shoving it all into small vocal ranges, which, which tended to happen a lot. Oh, on that. Um, I forgot what the original question was at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like, I was saying like wait, where am I going with this? No, Some sort this of is, stream of consciousness. I, I love the stream, the stream of consciousness. Like, I mean, it definitely like um, you've. I, I feel you've more than answered the question, really, because it kind of like. But what was well, it? No, well, the original question was just talk yeah. to us about the project. It wasn't even. A oh, question. okay. Yeah. Kind of like an open-ended <laughs> thing. Um, but like you, you, you talked about a couple of really well. Everything was very interesting, but like things that made me think were like so you got a hold of the midi versions of this which is mm -hmm. for those that don't know like if you listen to midi on a computer it's basically like almost like 8-bit but not chip tune it's just like it's very simple mm -hmm. kind of like keyboard sounding stuff um anyways um so when you went back to redo these songs like mm. you you said you you heard it all by ear and were able to figure it out? Do you have perfect pitch or were you just able to figure it out because you're, you know music? Um, you don't need perfect pitch to transcribe a song. You do need relative sure. pitch though, otherwise you'll go insane. Right. Uh, because uh, I think the, if you're trying to do it for the first time, you will essentially listen to a song and go, I think I can hear the oboe part and you'll just press the piano notes to try and figure it out. And you might have to do that for the first couple of notes but if you do it for all of them, you'll go insane. So rel what relative pitch does is if you can hear the intervals between two notes, you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of time analyzing that. You just know that that's like a fifth above the note that was played before. That's gonna be a B flat in this case, plug that in and then you kind of fact check, sanity check it after you've done like a, a, a whole voice and make sure it makes sense and it fits in with the, uh, the, the rest of the musical content as you build that up. But that was only for like twenty five percent of the songs on this. Like I got pretty lucky uh, with uh, what that original person dumped, uh, and most of the ones that I had to transcribe by ear were shorter. Although there were, uh, I think, Iron Colossus, Ragnarok, and ooh, I think it was those two were probably the longest ones I had to do by ear. And there's a lot going on in both of those. There's so many little details that I just never ever heard in my entire life in those tracks where, where you sit there like using an EQ to hear various ranges, like various things poke out. And I'm like, I didn't even know there was that instrument in this entire arrangement. And I've listened to it at least a hundred times. <laughs> that was the other thing I was gonna ask was like, so when it comes to like some of these more complex arrangements that they have in the game or like for this expansion, mm. like you have to like listen to it and listen to it in different ranges and stuff to like pick out like hand pick out which instruments actually were a part of the mix yeah like it's too there's too many voices in some of the more complex arrangements to legitimately just be able to hear it maybe someone can but i wasn't good enough to do it right. so i had to use an eq to to pull out the particular vocal or well, particular range of an instrument that I, well, I was transcribing at the time, mm -hmm. just so I could focus on that. Take the drums out, take the bass out, take some of the resonant frequencies from an instrument somewhere else in the spectrum and just try and focus on that. And even then you've got some cross coverage, but it's a little more simple to try and hear stuff out. But uh, yeah, there were, there were a lot of surprises in there. All of them happy surprises. Nothing where I'm like, I can't believe you added this thing I've never heard before. How dare you? <laughs> it was always like, oh, that's actually a really interesting piece of melodic content that we could pull out a bit more if we're doing this arrangement again. Like it got a bit lost the first time around, or that's how it felt to me. But since the production techniques have improved a lot since 2002, you can right. kind of keep the vibe of the original, but then have a little small opening for that part of the track that got lost uh, in right. the past. That's awesome. So would you say that this, like, doing this whole project has in some ways made you a better musician? Oh, for sure. Um, if not the actual work and the, more me realizing that my skills were not good enough to do this quickly. So mm -hmm. then you've got a lot of motivation to upgrade something like your ear training. Like there's a lot of apps where you can uh, uh, train how you hear different intervals and train how you hear various uh, 
uh, chords uh, and chord styles. Uh, so you can do the work a lot faster. But uh, yeah, it was more a really good project to motivate me to do something that uh, even in my old age, I haven't figured out how to study effectively without additional help <laughs> or additional motivation, at least. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, I'm one mm. of those people that recently started playing it, and I agree 100%. I didn't, it never struck with me. When you were talking about modernizing a song... Um, and a song that is just kind of HD'd or remastered mm -hmm. from the original. When I, I'm I'm just playing the game, and when I hear modernized, I'm like, oh, that that's that's a pretty cool mix. But when I hear that original, I get sent back to my childhood of playing the 1997 mm -hmm. release of this game, and it just hits differently. So yeah. I, I agree with you across the board on that. I, it never really struck me, and I've we've never had a musician on the podcast. I've never actually sat down <laughs> and talked to one either. So uh, besides LTL and his vocals, which was amazing to hear in the first place, but um, mm. a, a lot of us uh, are or used to be streamers. Looking looking at <laughs> people, um, there had there was a recent uh, copyright strike that went through, and it, the copyright mm. strike were hitting a bunch of the streamers left and right, and it looks like there wasn't really a follow through on it, and because there wasn't a follow through, um, word through the vine is it was just somebody from somebody's upset and wanted to hit all the uh, private server streamers. Well, the mm. reason I bring that up is because. With this being the original songs, but kind of HD'd or remastered or a new version of it, are we in any kind of danger of being able to listen to these songs while streaming and maybe getting a strike of some original copyright music? Or is it enough of a variance or hd that you think it'll slide through the cracks? Because originally, I mean, the people that stream Final Fantasy XI don't get hit for the mm. original songs. And if this isn't too much of a variable, I think it would slide under that. But the, again, I'm not a musician, so I'm looking for your input. I don't think you need a musician to answer this question. I think you need a copyright IP lawyer, lawyer of some description. Right. I, I don't earn that kind Did of thing. Make you feel better. Lie to my face, please. Lie to my face, okay? Uh, I've, I've, usually I've got a lot to say, but I think here I'll just say I'm completely ignorant. I would hope that people get to enjoy it in whatever way they like, but I think having, uh, I think Square's a pretty friendly company, but at some point they've got to meet their legal obligations, right? And I'm too ignorant to know what those are. So use it at your own risk <laughs> when uh, when that comes out. I don't. I personally am uncertain what the risk is. I, I don't want to say I think it'll be fine because I'm not really thinking anything at all. I'm just like, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it for everybody out there listening. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> DA stamp of approval. <laughs> I think when this question was written, it was in part because you had mentioned something about having licensed uh, the rights mm. to this. Oh, now, really? if yeah. if you yes. want to go into detail about what that meant. So if I was producing some original piece of music that I'd composed that I had com uh, that I had produced, there's no rights to deal with there unless I was doing something. Uh, unless I used some samples that I wasn't supposed to use and I needed to license them from somewhere. <clears throat> But when you're covering a track, if you want to release it uh, across like most of the music platforms, I think YouTube as a video platform, but not YouTube music allows you to do it without a license. But don't trust me on that. Figure it out yourself. I, I didn't go down that route because I didn't trust it. Uh, but if you want to distribute on uh, the most popular platform, Spotify, Apple Music, you've got to license your music with the original composer to uh, to be able to release it there. And licensing it allows the composer to get some revenue from the streams you make. I don't think that's gonna be like a big deal for no Shimizuta. I think he's, he's he doesn't care about the, the $20 uh, a month uh, I will make maximum <laughs> from, from doing this. I think that's uh, like a, an over projection as well. <laughs> but essentially that, through that process, that most of the music distribution platforms will allow you to uh, license each individual song with a, a licensing agency. I think it's based in America because they have quite a good reach to the other countries uh, for licensing those songs. But you just have to pay around 10, 15, $20, depending on uh, who you go with per song to get it out there. So it's a significant expense to put a project like this out. And the reason why I mentioned it in the announcement is that this is the reason why there's not a whole bunch of uh, music like this out there, because in reality, whoever does it is probably not going to make 
any money on it. It's just going to be a pure expense and you're doing it because uh, you think a few people will enjoy it. And that's currently been the case. I think a lot of people from our community have enjoyed it, but there's no way in hell I'll ever get that money back. But that's not what I'm interested in uh, for that project. Although I will say, I think I, I got to some very generous donations from um, uh, from uh, some Horizon server uh, lads. So I do appreciate those and that actually, I think that actually did make it viable. Now I think about it. <laughs> but in general, I was not expecting it to be uh, uh, to be uh, a net neutral endeavor. It was just more of a, here's, a, here's something I really loved. Here's something that I think you guys will enjoy. I hope it goes out there and gives uh, uh, people like three, four, five minutes of nostalgia during their day where they get to have like a, a really good memory uh, about times that were, maybe times that can still be when they listen to it. But I'd say the licensing is not complicated. It just, you have to spend money on it. It's probably the summary for licensing cover works like this. Well, the licensing of it, it definitely makes me feel a little bit better, even though I don't know anything about any of that stuff, but it does make me feel like it's... It doesn't help you out at all. I know, I know. It's a license but... to distribute on these platforms. Like it's a I'm... different, I think you a sync license, like a completely different thing to use it on a stream. Okay. Uh, See, and that's why you're teaching and... me. I didn't know any of this. You're teaching me. We're growing together. We're like a level 50 yeah. red mage. We're doing this. It's the blind leading the blind, but I'm like, uh, <laughs> I've got like very partial sight, but I still count as blind. <laughs> awesome. We got next up. Yeah. Um, mm. Go ahead. I think go ahead, it Amy. was already answered. Yeah. So Ooh. maybe you like come up with another question yeah, here. You're, you're can you tell us? Good, yeah. <laughs> can, can you tell us about the cover art for what you have chosen for like Spotify and the Apple Music? Like the the art that was chosen for. Did you make it? Yeah. Or? Uh, so I have to admit that this is uh, an AI endeavor. Uh, <laughs> the, the deadline for, for me personally was coming up quick. I asked a few friends of mine who were artists if they wanted to work on it and they were interested, but their schedules went a bit crazy at the, uh, uh, at the last minute. So I ended up using some art. I had a sort of like a, you know, a, like a concept piece, like for me to imagine what it could be like a little bit of a piece of motivational art. I ended up just, uh, tidying that up as best I could and, uh, and, and ended up using it for, for this. I think it's, I think it's uh, engaging. I'm not quite sure if the point of it gets across because it's supposed to be a sort of uh, abstract remake of the original Treasures of Adogan kind of color style and sort of uh, uh, shape style as well with a sort of Nash mirror like character kind of heading it all up. Uh, but uh, that's uh, that was the vision for it. I have to say, less thought went into that than the music because that's not necessarily my uh, area of skill. <laughs> I'm a bit shocked by that because I do like I like AI art, and I was just like, it's really like the girl on the cover is really cute. And mm. I don't know. Did it a take you editing... a while to like pick that? It's actually a composite. So I, I don't think AI could have got that result. It's, it's mm. a bunch of results that they ended up putting together and editing the uh, edges for lots of the elements there. It's probably, it's at least three different uh, final images put together with some tidying up on all the individual stuff and then put together. So a little bit of work went into it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So it's definitely not. I feel I feel bad saying it because uh, my my personal feeling is that if there's a, a job that a human wants to do, you should generally let them do it because they have to be there. The AI can kind of you know take a break <laughs> when when you need it to. Um, but uh, the time crunch and sort of my lack of network for this kind of stuff uh, sort of hit me over the head really hard, and I just had to get something done. In which case, it was it was quite useful. <laughs> And we'll be able to have that on screen for the YouTube audience. Um, if you're listening on audio, um, definitely check out the project. And we'll be linking to you know this music um, and this album like later on uh, in the video when we talk about that. Hmm. Uh, oh, it's my question now. Um, have you done any <laughs> other video game music? Like uh, you had kind mm. of mentioned that this was something that you, the project you took on through some learning you did in the past few years. But have you done anything else? Yeah, I actually had my first paid VGM composer gig last year, uh, so, which should be released at some point this year. I actually checked with uh, 
So, so the game is getting released for is Slice and Dice. It's a mobile dice throwing roguelike. It's a lovely little game. That sounds amazing. I kind of got addicted to it. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty good. Uh, so the way I got I got that uh, that gig, I'd actually got a bit addicted to that game, and I, I think the start of 2023. Uh, but something that struck me about it is that it had no music whatsoever. And when I looked into it more, it was kind of not, not necessarily a solo developer project, but definitely solo led indie project. Uh, and I reached out to the guy and said, if you ever want to have music on this, check out the stuff I've done. I'd love to make you some stuff. Uh, and maybe like eight months later, he was like, I've been thinking about this for ages. Uh, and yeah, I'd love you to do something. So like a cold email just saying, I love their game and I'll do it for them. They were like, absolutely. And this is going to be a pro gig. So jump aboard. I'm like, Thing. But Slice and Dice, don't know when the update is going to be released, but the game is already out. So you can search for that and uh, uh, have some fun with that. I'm sure Tan won't mind uh, a few more people checking it out. It's a really solid, fun roguelite that can get really crunchy if you want it to, or stay really chill and flowy if that's uh, more your vibe. And that's that's where my vibe is. But I've seen the... Uh, I've seen some of the uh, more difficult runs that people like to do on that game, and it blows my mind a little bit. As as all roguelikes in twenty well in the late twenty twenty well the early twenty twenties I guess uh, What's some cap some more capable thing slice and dice and it's yeah. on Android and uh, iOS I believe it's on I think it's also for I think it's also got a PC release but definitely right mobile platform. DA's already there got go. it up yeah DA's got it up thanks show for some the... love guys need, show some I need, love <laughs> I need something other than uh my clash royale what is it called it's uh yeah clash royale I, i'm I, thank you it's on yeah, itch.io as well that. oh yeah absolutely i think that's actually where i first found it too i was kind of poking around actually no i saw a northern line player i love that guy <laughs> sorry i was downloading Perfect. Um, it's my question. I promise I wasn't pulling a quetch. All right. So listening hey. to the, the hey. entire track on here um, and with me playing the Final Fantasy VII remake, um, I haven't mm. actually gotten part two yet because I don't own a PlayStation 5. Um, so I'm waiting for that to eventually in you know a few years come out on Steam. Um, as I'm going through it, the Eastward Bound song for me personally, just even though it's the boat ride, if I'm not mistaken, to... Mm. Uh, out again. Um, be, with that boat ride, it reminded me of Costa de Sol, um, and it became my favorite. Mm -hmm. It reminded can became my favorite on the tracks that I was listening to. But my question for you is, what is your favorite tr uh, song from this era? And a second part of that is, which one was your favorite to kind of remaster? I'm gonna add a question for you as well because there's definitely some I hate the most too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gonna... Or that like shape. Not, not, not like hate as in I think it's a terrible composition or anything, just like the one that gave me the most trouble. That, that, like emotionally that bubbled up before what I enjoyed more. <laughs> so you get a you get a sense for my psyche uh, there. Uh, but I think my favorite from the original soundtrack is probably Jeweled Bows, Bows. I'm not sure what the pronunciation is there necessarily, but it's the track that plays in uh, all of that. Uh, I'm getting this issue where I have to pronounce all the names from a game I've never discussed <laughs> in detail like, out loud, but uh, Bafflo Thickets, Bafflo Thickets. Yeah, Bafflo, I think is, is, is the, yeah, you were close, close enough, Bafflo. <laughs> it's the yeah. accepted, uh, accepted uh, yeah. pronunciation. Uh, so the music that plays in that zone, a very calm, woody, uh, chill environment, probably the, in my opinion, the best place to hang out as long as you're you're not getting hit by a flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, that's easily that's easily my favorite from the original. When it comes to the favorite from this album, in my head, my favorite has got to be the one that went from the worst kind of what the, my least favorite. It went to my absolute favorite when I ended up producing it. And it was actually Hell Riders, perhaps one of the least popular songs uh, on this album as it's being streamed right now, uh, which I think it's the B, the, the BCNM track for Atugan. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what it was about the original, but I just didn't vibe with it. But as I started playing with it, I feel like the track was very well composed, but the limitations it had with the production values from 2002, well, I guess it's 2003, 2004 for that, but the limitations it had 
meant it couldn't really shine through. But as soon as I started applying uh, more modern orchestral sounds to it, I feel like it really opened up. It started to get a lot more power to it, which is what that track feels like to me. It feels like uh, the sort of doom filled presence that's trying to scare the crap out of you basically so i tried to lean in as much as i could for that i feel like it gets the vibe quite strong it's like a crescendo near the end of the loop with like some really raspy brass and it just adds this uh like like gritty guttural texture to it. I, re I really enjoyed the transition of that song from its original to what it came on the album. But I'm, I, I'm almost 100% certain it's the, the least streamed track <laughs> as it is yeah, now. The PS2 limitations literally comes back to haunt yeah. us saying that it <laughs> held back that song from being as good as what it was. Yeah. Like he did it, uh, no, she did a good job on that. I just don't think there was a smart way to get it to be what maybe he imagined in his head. But uh, I'm hoping uh, when people do uh, some Atugan BCNMs, whenever that is, I, I will confess I have no idea when that will be. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they can strike either, that question off the list. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Staff doesn't know either. It's, it's fine. Uh, but uh, I hope that that one. Uh, surprises people because i don't think that i don't think many will try and seek it out on this album everyone's got their favorites and i'm fairly certain that's not got too many fans but when you start listening to it in game i hope one gets you i think it might surprise you <laughs> so uh guys uh, um talking about favorite tracks let's talk about mm. like what, what was what's everyone's favorite track i'll start um i have two um my two favorites from the remake um that rosu has done um, our Black Coffin. I, mm. I love Black Coffin and um, Faded Strife for the Besieged uh, soundtrack. So those two are my absolute favorites. So Ayami, I know you've given it a listen. I know you've come up with some favorites or at least a favorite. What's, uh, what's your favorite? It's going to be the cutest sounding one for me. And it's uh, Whispers of the Gods. Mm. It sounds so pretty, you know? Nice. Like... Cal? Um, so... As a uh, Dragoon main, I spent a lot of time sitting in Whitegate. <laughs> and, uh, so, the Whitegate soundtrack itself, I forgot what it's actually up. Um, yeah, what is the name of that soundtrack? Bustle it's, of the uh, Capital? Uh, yeah, it's exactly. Bustle of the Capital. Mm -hmm. That one and Black Coffin are also, they're both very good. I like both of those, but it, it like brings me back to just sitting in Whitegate, so I like it. So much time I think it's something people don't think stuff. about. Yeah. Well, it's something that nobody thinks about, right? Like you sit in these zones, and I think Rosu brought it up earlier. Is people sit there think how long your average EXP party is, right? And how long you sit and listen to those songs while they're playing, whether it's the combat music or you're sitting in town or fishing or whatever. So those songs are like burned into your brain. <laughs> yeah. After so long. <laughs> No, for sure. I have to say, Bustle of the Capital is probably the one I did the most drafts for. There's a whole story behind that one, but I'll let you guys finish your favorites. I, I'm feeling very validated now. Look, keep <laughs> that on track. Just... we got to ask about the Bustle of the Capital story after we're yeah. finished here. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. All right, so DA, what's your, what are your favorite tracks? Um, I was Eastward Bound, uh, just because it's that first boat ride over to Whitegate, and when I first took that boat ride over, that still holds a spot for me, so hearing this, um, and again, the Coast of the Soul reference, because I'm playing the remake at the same time, so it's it literally was a double hit on me, and every, that one just solidified. Everything else, I was like, alright, but I kept coming back to it. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. And Quetch, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so, um... My my favorite is your take on the Nashmau track. I think it's Bandits Market. Yeah, Bandits's Market. Ba Bandits's Market. <laughs> I think it's a I think it's a pluralized possessive <laughs> for, for everyone's disdain. Yeah, um, I I definitely I may mention Whisper of the Gods. Um, that was the track when I had heard you put this out. That was the first one I wanted to go to. I just I love that the ID was subterrane. Uh, is is the, I think this might maybe one of my first times saying that one out loud. Um, it's just like a zone that I would just go sit in, uh, just for that track. It, it gives me like Balam Garden, um, vibes from FF8. Yeah. Like they're both very sparse productions, like lots of like plucks. Like I can yeah. see that. Um, and eight was my first, uh, like 
you know 3d final fans you guys have a lot of nostalgia for seven i see eight was my uh foray into the <laughs> playstation era um but i just want to point out one more i'm excited for is uh iron colossus i'm i'm excited to see whatever battle that's in you know what i mean like it's just it's got that like get pumped kind of vibe so um i'm excited for people to experience that one along like because this music is going to be experienced alongside a lot of people's revisit to an expansion that is well loved mm. And, uh, like, you almost cannot separate that when listening through um, your record here is, uh, you know, what, what people are going to be going in back into this, you know, this place. So for a lot of people, Horizon is their first foray back into Eleven since, since when. And for some people, they're entirely coming to yeah. the game for the first time. And um, um, it's kind of inseparable from listening through and hearing and just kind of under, understanding the gameplay elements coming along to the music. And I think there's a lot of really great stuff that's going to be coming from that. Even the people who played retail all the way up till currently, their home points aren't set in Whitegate. Not many people go there anymore. It's a ghost town. So being able to Minus. Visit... <laughs> Minus yeah, Whitegate. A lot of people will be able to go back and revisit that experience, except the main blues that stay there and live there and dwell there. I I don't leave because I, I, I just, I don't know what it is about that place, but everything's within reach. Like I, I it just, is. Everything I need is right there, and well, I don't need to go anywhere else. Well, you know, it's interesting, I love too. that fucking music. We all came out of Juno because Juno was, like, the hub for everything, right? And then, like, oh, yeah. Tavnasia was kind of not really. And then we then we got Whitegate, and everybody, like, everybody was there. Mm -hmm. and it and it and And it was just, like, I don't know, like a perfect point in time for Eleven's life cycle, lifespan. Well, it was also because then you could stay close in case the fucking besieged happened, and yeah. you could go over <laughs> and pop in and go go die. Lag out, well, lag out <laughs> and, and die to things you can't see. Yeah, lose so. the astro candy so you can't use NPCs. Yeah, uh, I have to say I never it. participated in a besieged. Despite really wanting to, my computer would just die. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say, if, you, if your computer could I... barely run anything, I don't think that the besieged would load in for you at all. It was terrible. No. Nope, nope, I nope. think it might be the main reason I didn't do any a whole lot of endgame stuff, because Dynamis was borderline impossible. <laughs> when people weren't loading in, I was basically just looking at the health bars and going, F5, control, F5, or whatever, yeah. just to try and cure whoever's there. Like, I just couldn't see anything, couldn't get any context for it. It's like, that guy's in trouble, I guess I'll heal him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I perceived I got no hope. <laughs> so let's hear the bustle of the capital story. Tell us about it. What's the, uh, what's the story behind it? Uh... It's kind of a story that only exists in my own head, so I'm not sure. Well, that means don't most stories be. exist in people's own head? Let's hear it. Well, Let's sometimes it involves a lot of everything. other people. <laughs> out, sweetheart. We'll have a moment. We'll talk. You just said we're going to unpack everything. Tell us the story, please. So I've actually heard a, a lot of remakes of Bustle of the Capital kind of preparing for this and deciding the direction that I wanted to take with it all. And there is one instrument, and it's the main kind of... Uh, instrument line for, for that track and no one can really replicate it very well and there's a lot of good reasons for that <laughs> because it's supposed to sound like uh, an indian style oboe I, I don't know the name of it it's so beyond me uh but it's actually a sample it's the same sample used for the sandarian bagpipes <laughs> no in the original way. absolutely it is That's and that <laughs> <laughs> you can go compare the two, maybe kind of pull up the files on your own time. It's exactly the same. And it's actually a sound file that is still used today by at least a few professional uh, uh, kind of composers because it's part of a, like a large uh, world music sample pack that it's like you can buy it for like $200, $300 if you're so inclined. So it's still, it's that particular sound is still around in the world today. Uh, but replicating it with a real instrument is, is pretty much impossible because that instrument does not exist in real life. A bagpipe, which sounds like a sort of Indian oboe with like a really weird attack profile to it. Everyone struggled with it and I struggled with it as well. I actually spent a whole bunch of time do, trying to find interesting variants on that sound that had a high level of quality to them. And I always kept coming back to the oboe which never really sounded that right. And when I was putting in some drafts for this track to the team on the on the staff Discord, 
everyone kind of agreed. They were saying that the sound of that main melodic instrument from that track just isn't right unless it replicates the original because that, as you said, it's kind of burned into your mind. And because you've heard it so much, and you've heard it twice because you just did it in Sandaria too, mm -hmm. uh, like the the exact uh, profile of each of the individual notes has to sound right. And I think honestly, I was like, I don't think that is an aspect of this track that I can replicate with the fidelity that I, I've intended for some of the other tracks here. So we have to go in a, a slightly more <laughs> kind of traditional orchestral direction and see if we can manage that. And in the end, I think the way we I got that instrument to work was to sort of pitch an oboe down by about uh, uh, yeah two semitones, <laughs> uh, get it to play at the uh, the original uh, the original pitch, so it's kind of got a deeper sound, a little raspier sound in there, and then kind of saturate some of the resonant frequencies uh, uh, kind of higher up in the uh, the EQ profile for that instrument, just so it gets that sort of like a little bit of a raspy quality while still using a high quality orchestral sample that mixes well with the rest of that track. Uh, but I'm getting to it that right point. now, man, and it is perfect. Like, I mean, <laughs> honestly, like, I, I mean, like, as soon as you started talking about it, I turned the track on and like, this is one of the songs that I've heard the most, obviously yeah. in all of final fantasy 11. And like, I have to admit that like, I know what instrument you're talking about. It's the main line, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. yeah. And it's one. so like, exposed. The first right. time it comes in, it's just that. If it's right. wrong, it's you right hear in it your instantly. ear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like, I have to admit that, like, I mean, it's so funny to hear you talking about like all the process you had to go through to arrive at this sound, but like, which sounds like, oh, I mean, I mean, God, yeah, of course that's what it sounds like because that's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> but like, to listen to it, man, it's. Damn, like the, the work that you put into that is is obvious because this hits every single nostalgia, like ticks all the boxes, man. Well, like it's well, like we nice, were man. talking the other night, me, LTL, and Ayame, and I pulled up your Spotify, right? With your remaster and pulled up a capture from retail mm. and were was listening to it simultaneously starting at the same time. And it just sounds so much cleaner on your remaster but it sounds exactly the same if that makes sense like it is yeah. perfectly pitched <laughs> to match but it sounds crisper cleaner more quality than the original obviously because like you said the limitations then and all that stuff but like ltl said it checks all the boxes right like it sounds exactly like it should in my head mm. yep. yeah like it's a it's a weird feeling to try and replicate because it's definitely not the same but how do you get roughly in the right place and get the same kind of effect from it? I, I was actually really frustrated with this track for pretty much until like two months before we I ended up releasing it. <laughs> uh, and at one point I was even considering like layering the original over an orchestral sample to see if I can get some of the attack profile in there, which makes it up. But actually the original sample for it is very low quality. It's got like a little bit of clip at the start. So it kind of, uh, I'm sure Quetch will sympathize here. It's got like a little tick for every note. And once you hear it, you cannot unhear it. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to listen back. for it now. <laughs> it's so, I, as when I first, I, I kind of got through a first pass and thought, okay, this doesn't sound too bad. And as soon as I heard it, I thought, I don't think I can do much with it because if I try and mess with the envelope of attack for that sample, we're getting rid of the part of it I need, right? That weird startup kind of raspy attack. And then the rest of the sample could have been the orchestral instrument. But if the start has the problem, oh, it drove me nuts. <laughs> so you, like these things you, no one you, will ever see. <laughs> <laughs> you keep talking about like you had your deadline and everything with the project, right? You wanted to release at a certain mm -hmm. time. But how long did it take you to actually complete the entire project? I think I started the work in July or August of last year. So uh, I wasn't working full time on it necessarily, but I, I think a lot of hours went into it because uh, as, as we kind of discussed that, I think the major portion of this was the production element of it. So I probably spent at least two days worth of like, actual time figuring out one instrument on Bustle of the Capital, right? Like this was a, <laughs> like stuff like that came up, not all the time and not to that level of severity, but. <laughs> You know, similar problems of uh, more minor scale. Uh, 
and figuring those out just takes a lot of time, especially when this is probably the first big project that I was trying to produce in, a, in, in as professional a way as I could manage. Uh, so I think I've mixed each of these tracks a minimum of three times, kind of a first pass with my best effort, comparing that to a lot of reference tracks that I was trying to uh, uh, somewhat mimic the sound of, because uh, again, I, I'm, point, I'm thinking of Quetch here as someone who spent a lot of time dealing with audio. But if you listen to something for too long, your brain goes insane. It cannot compare A and B anymore. Suddenly everything sounds great or everything sounds terrible and you've got no kind of cornerstone for whether that's actually true or not. And when you're mixing, typically you'll use a reference track to kind of hold your ear to a sound profile that you like and you think is going to be good for this track. And you can constantly try and compare the two to keep the sound good so you don't have like a very bassy track or like a weirdly high-end airy track that doesn't fit the style you want necessarily. So I spent, I probably had three goes of that with each individual track plus like small edits when I heard something that I really didn't like when I was listening to it on like a walk to work or a meeting. I've, I've spent a lot of time listening to my own music and it feels uh, very unfulfilling <laughs> to be like walking around again. I'm listening to something that I absolutely hate and I can't do anything about it for the next five hours. It's like keeping notes in like my Obsidian uh, app. <laughs> I got to throw a shout out there. You started it in July or August. So it took you less time to do the 21 tracks that it has for <laughs> Quetch to get the D&D of Final Fantasy 11 out. Oh, oh my YouTube. gosh. <laughs> wow. We started when? Uh, July? No, we started September. Oh, September, yeah. 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 <laughs> It'll be out soon. I'm <laughs> looking forward to it. It sounds like a real fun project. Soon TM. It's definitely one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, think in the, in the sort of volunteer, kind of hobbyist, uh, trying our best world, soon TM is perhaps the, a mantra <laughs> in, our, in our life. <laughs> Um, so you, um, you had done some talk about the, um, the different, like the attack envelopes and, and things that you were working on with that particular, uh, track. Mm. And I'm curious, what is your, what is your DAW? What is your equipment? Like, what are you, what are you using to produce something? You know, let's talk tech a little bit before we, uh, yeah. close up here. Uh, I've got a very simple setup. It's an all in the box setting. And what that means is that it's almost entirely software driven. I don't have like an external synth necessarily producing lots of the sounds that I, I, I do, but I used it very sparingly uh, on this project. Uh, but it's essentially just uh, logic, uh, a whole bunch of orchestral sample libraries that I've pulled together over time. I like the sound of the various instruments going into it. Uh, and that's a whole project in itself, I would say, if you're starting from scratch. Uh, I would say this project will be very difficult because you basically have to learn 50 instruments and how they sound and where they sound good and how you're going to use them and how you're going to uh, uh, like modulate them from quiet to loud pitches and where their where their range sounds good there. Like there's a lot to to manage in just the sound there. But I'm using a lot of Spitfire libraries. If uh, uh, anyone in the, in the industry is interested, um, but uh, other than that, I've just got a a very nice MIDI keyboard these days that uh, some of the some of my donators helped me get. Um, and uh, I sit there plonking stuff out on that or clicking it with uh, this mouse. <laughs> That's my setup. <laughs> Is that one of those vertical mice? The ones that... He's got a carpal tunnel mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't have carpal tunnel. I just really don't want to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to have, uh, I don't know, I think these mice uh, are kind of cool now, but I've had this for about six years, maybe, and it wasn't cool to run around an office with this thing. All right. I have the last, the last question. Ooh. The final question. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people go to listen and follow you? Oh, thank you. Your socials. Um, <laughs> yeah, I socials. promote, my friend. Self-remote. Oh, this is the part I was dreading. Uh, well, you can listen to you can listen to the memories of Artagon, uh, 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 kind of OST remake on pretty much any uh, anywhere where you normally listen to music, YouTube Music, Spotify, Apple Music. But the distributor sent it to at least two hundred different platforms. Go figure, right? There's a lot of places to do this kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, I was surprised too. I was reading the names and going, what the hell is uh, AWA and Cubas and <laughs> what, what, what am I dealing with there? But you can go there if you wish as well. 
Uh, but I'm not a super super social uh, socials kind of guy. I've got a, a mastodon, uh, which is as interesting as you'll let it be. Uh, and I'm at Roho on mastodon.social if you're so inclined. Uh, and I also have a, a Ko-Fi, and the name for that is uh, Roso as get, again. So it's R O S O E if you're interested in finding me there and supporting. Uh, maybe making a few more Final Fantasy XI style albums. Uh, I'm thinking about what project should be next in that regard, so I'm not sure <laughs> not sure what I'll end up doing. But I think I'll do something. It's, this project was very uh, fulfilling in its production, and now it's out to everyone. I'm, uh, I'm completely delighted. It's got way more attention than uh, I ever expected it to, so I'm just very grateful. Well, it's absolutely deserved. Um, I mean, it's like, you know, if you guys haven't listened to it, seriously, like, it sounds really good. <laughs> If you haven't checked it out, please do. There's all of the links are going to be below. Um, I know we said it was the final question, but one final question for you. Um, mm. What's the future? What does the future hold for you? Like, what are you working on now? What's next for you? Great question. Uh, right now, I'm sort of ideating what kind of music I'd like to make next. Uh, so Wings of the Goddess is very far away. I don't think I'm... Yeah. <laughs> we'll considering not even that. into the yeah we'll yeah. we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but uh, -huh. uh in my head all the ideas uh so i don't know how much you guys engage with uh, some of the more orchestral stuff that square enix licenses and produces but they have a mm -hmm. whole bunch of uh symphonic uh albums that sort of uh uh do a, do a sort of amalgamation of a lot of music from particular games and try and put it into like one long form stuff, right? symphonic yes. like kind of distant stuff, worlds yeah. but there's a ton of stuff like it lots of people have licensed uh, this stuff and made really good things it's a really good chrono trigger one uh i wish i knew the name oh. of more than that you search for chrono trigger you ain't gonna find this one first i guarantee it uh <laughs> but uh i think if i want to the project i'm going to do next is hopefully something in that vein I am 100% sure that Final Fantasy XI will not get this kind of treatment, uh, at least not to the level that I think it should. So I think my next project is to actually try uh, and produce a very more symphonic style album. And if at all possible, see if there's enough uh, fan support to get a licensed concert for it, because that would be super cool. But we'll see. That's a that's a big push on a little dream there. So we'll see. That'll be great. Let me know if you make it out to Vegas. Uh, to one of the big, <laughs> the big venues in Vegas, I'll come out and see you. Um, yeah, who's who's running Vegas at the moment? Uh, not me. Uh, not me. Nah. <laughs> F, I think F one is running Vegas right now. I think that's what. Uh, I think yeah. Formula One is is the one who's in charge of Vegas at this point. Um, oh. but yeah, like every episode, and this is no different. Uh, we do a little segment called uh, Glitch Fest. Um, don't know mm. if anybody has any glitches coming up, but since you're here and you're our special guest, um, it doesn't have to be a new one. It can be something that you've suffered with in the past. Uh, are there any <laughs> uh, horizon bugs that you want to uh, mention or giggle about or uh, express frustration with? Horizon bugs. It's a tough one. I've had a mostly positive experience, but I've sort of stayed away from the, the content that most people have issues with. I think if there's bugs, it's the improvements they made to make fishing a bit more interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't play this era of uh, fishing in the original. Uh, so I was just quite happy that there was an updated version of that in uh, in this, or at least the, the current version. Oh, the whole like whole press left, press right thing? Because that wasn't original, yeah, right? It used to be just the yeah. top of the, um, yeah. the, the pole. fishing pole that would indicate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, but that's not really, I, I don't have to thank any of the guys I work with for that. <laughs> it could be the tick in that song you were talking about. That's the glitch. That's that not a glitch. Tick. That's not a horizon bug. That's and that's gone horizon. now. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never that's some, hear that. That's some, other, that's some other problem with the tracks that I haven't heard yet, but not that one. <laughs> um, well, anybody else got anything? Anybody else come across some funny stuff? Anything that you've seen? Any issues? Any bugs? Any... Uh... Bunnies. I don't, I don't know if it's a bug, but uh, yesterday I found out that if you're a summoner and you go to do High Wind, uh, you okay. cannot summon an avatar ah. on the airship to fight High Wind. No pets Rendering at all, by the way. Effectively useless as yeah, a summoner. Yeah, no pets at all. <laughs> so I'm sitting there as a 61 summoner, casting Dia and slow and paralyze <laughs> over and over again on it. Cal, I ran up to it on Beastmaster today, and I knew you couldn't call a pet, and I'm a 62 Beastmaster, so I ran up and I went, pop, pop, and it was like, 
50 damage or whatever. And then I lined up perfectly. So when he did the knockback, it knocked me over the edge and it, hit, <laughs> puts me, it puts me in the corner so he can't AOE me anymore. And then I just go AFK for the rest of the boat ride and let everyone else kill it. I can see you in say chat right now. Like, sorry, guys, I guess I'm useless. Can't <laughs> read it. <laughs> Whoopsie. I tried so Good hard. luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Um, all right. Well, if there's nothing else, guys, then uh, thank you all so much for watching this episode. It has been an absolute treat. Thank you again to Rosu for taking the time out of your like very early morning <laughs> to wake up and be with us. It is it means a lot to us that you were willing to do that. Um, it's this has been an absolutely fascinating interview episode. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we don't usually talk about music, but I could probably talk for hours. I felt like I was geeking out at certain points, like asking questions. It was awesome to talk to you, man. You're very knowledgeable. Um, again, highly recommended. If you have not checked it out, please check out um, the links will be below, but please check out this updated version of the TOAU soundtrack. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, but with that being said, thank you again for another amazing episode. Make sure you check us out on Spotify, Apple Music, and all of the other places that we're at. YouTube. Um, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube's an important one, right? And make sure you, if you're, if you're not checking us out Those on YouTube, three. you can see all of our beautiful faces <laughs> over there on the YouTube. Um, and if you're not a member of the Discord, please drop into the Discord so that we can make fun of you. I mean, so that we can talk and we can hang out and you can find <laughs> out the latest of what's going on. We always post, well, DA is always up to like five in the morning posting when a new episode goes live. He's like, it's here. It's here. Check it <laughs> out. Right, it's, yeah. it's, well, I'm not saying I don't it's think a bad it does thing. anything. I don't think it does anything. <laughs> well, it lets everyone know. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, from myself, I am a cat. I see Caladrius, DA Soccer, Call Me Quetch, and our very special guest, Rosu. I am the Lost Time Lord, and we're going to be uh, taking off. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye. Bye. Ciao. -bye. Bye.